Hello everybody, this is Mike Nunnery. I am going to show you folks my digital workflow as it relates to designing prosthetic sockets, utilizing a mesh mixer as a method of shelling the sockets out for multiple wall thickness for both um, prosthetic sockets that are diagnostic, which can be pre printed in your facility using basic FDM machines. Um, the workflow can also be translated to a final additive manufacturing using processes such as multi-jet fusion. Uh, I'm gonna start with a very uh, simple transtibial below the knee um, digital scan file. I do all my scanning in my facility, what I call direct patient scanning. So I'm not going to go show you that particular workflow, but what I'd like to do is focus on utilizing mesh mixer on the final rectified or modified scan digital patient model. Okay, before we start the actual process of importing our file, just a couple things I like to do um, for setting up my preferences. First, you know, you can hit the space bar and change your background color on the camera. It's set to free or snap, I think, actually. Um, it doesn't matter, though. Set your color to whatever color you, your preference is on the background. I like this light blue color. It just helps to have the um, file pop out at me. Um, I'm not gonna mess with any of these other uh, mesh colors. That's for um, more complicated uh, um, design issues that we're not gonna deal with today. Secondly, we're gonna go up to file preferences. In the general file, I utilize uh, Fusion 360. That's just navigation mode. If you're using you're used to using Mesh Mixer, that's fine. Uh, uh, my Mesh Color mode is Vertex. My Mesh Normal mode is the uh, Group Normals of default. I do like to enable Free Rotate right here, and um, I believe that the default is Reset Camera on Scene Change and Show View Cube. The file, I have it pretty much set. I believe these are all defaults, although you can compare what's on my screen to what is on your mesh mixer on your screen. Same with dialogues, defaults. There is a printer tab if you have one of the printers on file. A lot of these are old. Um, I utilize my own printers and my own sliceware software, so this is somewhat irrelevant. Now, we're gonna import our file. Now, I have a file, demo transtibial. This file uh, was um, scanned and modified utilizing uh, Willowwood's tracer program. Um, this was a direct uh, scan to a patient with a right transtibial amputation. And this was done over a custom gel liner. Uh, we went through the uh, modifying process through Tracer. You can see my modification designs. I've also um, extended the distal end for a cylindrical adapter, which I'll be using a Bulldog lock. So the first thing we want to do is bring it in and we want to analyze this. We're going to hit the analysis tool and we're going to hit the inspector tool. Now if you notice, I've got this sort of hollow a mesh cloud file. Um, I think of it as like a, a skin, a lampshade. Um, it's asking us to close these off. So we can. We could just do an auto repair. We're going to just take those and it's going to fill it in. All right? Perfect. So now it almost looks like we have what amounts to very similar to a plaster model. Now we're going to click done. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to think about painting this, if you will, using the select tool. Now it's in brush mode up top here. Uh, it's an unwrap brush, which is pretty much default. And the size, right, right now the size is at a 55. And you can change that brush size to whatever you want, smaller or bigger. So if I'm printing a socket, 
or I'm painting the walls or trim lines of my socket, I'm, I want to have a, a decent size to it. So I'll bring it down to about 55, 54, something like that. So what I'm going to start to do is to think about you have a plaster model, you're thinking about your trim lines. So I want to print everything orange that um, is what is going to be my prosthetic socket. Um, now, sometimes I will spend a little bit more time on this, but um, I've done so many of these that I, I feel like this has been a, a good way to do it. Don't forget to do your bottom distal end here. Um, that's important because you want to have this as uniform as possible. Uh, I'm using my right mouse button to spin this and revolve it around quickly. Um, that's why we had some of those preference settings. That's what works best for me. Um, I'm painting with my mouse left clicking. So I'm going to bring this video, or this wall up my posterior wall. I'm just going to continue to paint. And if you notice, the trim lines are somewhat choppy. And we are going to use a tool to fix that. Now the other thing you can do if you want to erase, you're going to hit the shift button, hit the left mouse button, and you are going to just erase some of the areas you, you may have overpainted. So for instance, I'd like to bring this up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to fill that little triangle in. Um, this here, I'm going to fill it in, but if now I'm going, to, I'm going to shift left mouse button. I'm going to sort of do a better transition. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, what we want to do is fix these boundaries, right? Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to go up to modify. I'm going to scroll down to optimize boundary. I'm going to left click it once. Doesn't look like anything happened, but you'll see that it does. I'm going to go to Modify. I'm going to left click Smooth Boundary, and you can see I've got this sort of odd looking design. What you want to do is take your smoothness slider and bring it all the way to 100. Okay. Then you want to take your Preserve Shape, bring it all the way to 100. Leave iterations alone. You're going to go to your border rings, you're going to type 1, and you're going to hit enter. Make sure you have preserve group orders toggled and create new groups toggled. Now hit accept. And what you can see is you have a really nice, smooth trim line. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to separate this white model from this painted orange. We're going to edit. We're going to scroll down to separate or you can hotkey Y. And if you notice, this is my original imported file. This is my part. We're going to get rid of the original. I'm actually just going to delete it out of there. I'm going to come over, bring our browser. I'm going to double or I'm going to single click on this. Uh, it's a white sort of gray shade. Now, what I want to do is actually make my socket wall thickness. We're going to we're going to offset the wall thickness. And again, we're going to utilize the select tool. There's my paintbrush. I'm just going to double click it. It's going to paint the whole, the whole model. I'm going to come up to edit. I'm going to come up to offset. Now it's going to offset whatever was set in that box up here. It's, I think the default might be two millimeters. So I'm going to try to quickly explain. Um, I'm going to set it at 3.6 millimeters. I'm going to hit enter. Um, there is a reason for that. I use a 1.6 millimeter nozzle and when I print with that nozzle two perimeter wall, walls essentially, I've measured that to be about 3.6 millimeters thick. Um, 
even though technically a 1.6 millimeter nozzle times two is actually 3.2 um, there is an oozing factor of the pet g when it comes out the print head and that's what i've determined works best for my machine i'm going to leave the accuracy alone i'm going to leave the regularity alone soft transition i think what's important to note is that we want the connected box we want the preserved boundary box and we want to preserve groups i'm not going to really go into detail on what those all do but i could tell you is that is why i have this nice solid wall thickness you can make this wall thickness as thick as you want um, or as thick as necessary um, but i've um, come up with this method number one to provide a robust base wall thickness based on my printer head and also um, because uh, it also allows for us to have some bit of flexibility in really how thick we want our socket walls I'm gonna hit accept now so we have this I'm gonna clear the selection and by clearing it it just means okay um, you can see that nice 3.6 millimeter wall thickness. Um, and we preserved our internal uh, socket shape. Now this is, I always look at this as actually my prosthetic socket now. The other thing I do is I like to build a extrude, a frame around that um, because I send all my, most of my diagnostic sockets are sent out of my facility for perhaps several days or even several weeks. So I like to do a reinforcement frame. And essentially, I do the same thing. I go back to my select tool and we're going to paint. I'm just going to make my paintbrush a little bit smaller and I'm going to re I'm going to actually add additional layer of thickness of my printed socket. Um, I like to use these curves. I essentially make a frame which will be extruded during the print on our base socket wall. So I'm going to kind of do this quick to save time, not to bore everybody. Um, again, I like to make the base thickness. I'm actually going to add two millimeter frame thickness to this. So this orange area um, I'm actually uh, designing and you could be as creative in your design as you want this is just a basic way of setting this up for any of you people who are not familiar with doing this um, I'll try not to be too sloppy with it but I think you're gonna get the under the understanding of really where I'm going with this once you run through this a few times I'm using my left mouse button to click I'm left-handed so you can probably set up your computer however you way you want um, I like to make sure there's some nice curves I don't like to have these um, you know squared off I, I think whenever you're doing a frame design you want to have you want to curve things around um, I think it does a better job now I'm going to erase this area here I'm going to hit shift I'm going to hit my my mouse button I'm going to come back and just paint that up a little neater. Again, I'm going to round this off. I'm going to round that off a little better. Probably going to come up, round that off, especially here. You want a nice rounded area. So, it, you know, you could technically just extrude um, your socket wall to be, um, you know, 5.6 millimeters thick. But actually, by oops, I, what I did is I'm gonna I'm gonna go back. I hit the wrong. Um, there we go. If you ever make a mistake, you can always go back and hit this undo back or Control Z. It'll bring you back to where you want to be. I think it's that's a good thing to know. Okay, so like right there, I clicked on my mouse button. Um, I'm just gonna escape. There we go. And I'm going to go and do back. There we are. Okay. So if you make a mistake, you can undo back or control Z until you get back to the spot you want to be. All right. So what I've got here is I'm actually going to leave it just so you can understand. So I'm looking at this frame design. I mean, normally I'd spend a little bit more time. 
just perhaps um, minimizing the amount of material I need based on the size of the patient. I have uh, printed sockets for patients up to 380 pounds using, using this method and it's worked pretty well. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back, optimize boundary, go back again, smooth boundary, and we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to bring our smoothness all the way up to 100. We're going to preserve our shape all the way up to 100. My border rings, I'm going to hit 1, enter. I'm going to double check that my preserve group borders and my create new groups are toggled. And once you set this up, it should stay the same. And I'm going to hit accept. And there we have, you know, our frame. So what I'm going to do, and again, based on the nozzle I print with, which is 1.58 to 1.6 millimeters, I am going to do another offset. What I found is doing an offset of 2 millimeters. I'm going to leave um, this accuracy alone. I'm going to leave the regularity alone. I'm not going to do a soft transition, although you can. Um, the soft transition is, is what's going to um, provide a transition from the frame to the base. And I'll we'll try to explain that. We're going to be connected, preserve boundary, preserve groups, accept. If you have a slower computer, it may take a little bit of time for mesh mixer to get through this. There we go. So we have our now attached two millimeter extruded frame on top of our original 3.6 base thickness. And if you notice, the inner walls have not changed. So I'm gonna go ahead right now and clear the selection. Now, what I can do is export this file, hit the, bring it out to export, it'll rename the file, and that'll be sent to go into my slicer. Um, just to kind of um, look at a few things, if, some, if you feel like this squared off situation right here is not that great, you can sculpt that. And the way to do it is go to your sculpt tool. I would do a surface sculpt. I would pick a brush that is called your um, Robust Smooth. I would do the fall off brush. And then I would do about a 32 strength with a size of about 23 maybe. And then um, I'd hit enter and it's gonna bring my brush down. So watch what happens when I left click you can actually smooth that transition right out all right so you're playing with the sculpting tools is a little bit different i don't normally do this when i'm doing a pet g print i don't really care um it's a test socket and i actually like to have that squared off um sort of edge when i'm printing it actually makes my print with an fdm printer a little bit neater um, this is the type of tool you may want to use to smooth up these transition lines when you're doing a sort of a, a print out of SLS or multi-jet fusion. So you get that nice, really nice kind of smooth transition. It gives it a really nice look. Um, so these are other tools that, you know, I'll explain at a later date and time. Um, but you really don't have to. So... That is your model, and interestingly enough, if I were to run this through the analysis tool, um, I still will run the inspector. It's going to pick up any flaws, so and there are none. There are no mesh defects. There are no disconnections. Everything's good. Um, I've printed uh, numerous um, sockets on my own, hundreds, and I've done... Um, about a dozen different prints using um, outside an outside service, which has been um, they've they've gone through with no flaws. So hopefully this will give you an idea on how to run this workflow.